If you've ever watched a movie and felt the tension as the protagonist struggles to find a way out of their darkest moment, then you can relate to what it's like to walk through suffering. We all face this journey at some point in our lives, one that is rife with heartache and pain. But today we want to remind you that there is hope even in our darkest moments. Perspective really is everything. What's hard to endure in this life can be seen differently when we approach it with the eyes of heaven. Hope in the midst of suffering is possible. Today on The Father Pursuit, we talk about hope, holding on, and heaven's perspective, even in the midst, and especially in the midst of our suffering. Welcome to The Father Pursuit. This is an M46 Ministries podcast about fathers who want to pursue their children. As God our Father pursues us, we want to encourage fathers as they pursue their kids. And for those of you just trying to figure it all out, we walk this road together. No shame, no judgment, no condemnation, just a real look at what it means to be an intentional father, learn from our mistakes, and grow forward in love and grace. Together, we are learning to be the father our Father wants us to be. Welcome to The Father Pursuit. My name is Matt Davis, and I am joined today by Brian Elliott, who is the president and co-founder of M46 Ministries. And Brian, we are here on the last episode of season one, and uh, it's good to be here with you. And I've enjoyed uh, this first season. Um, What's it been like for you to even just go through a a podcast and to be able to relive a bit of your story and uh, to share it from a different perspective. Yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. It's a it's a fresh perspective on the book, right? Cuz the book there was a lot of thought that was put into it and and this was so conversational and I think having Bryn too, you know, coming in uh, and giving her perspective, you know, from age 23 that she's been, I mean, we've we've been you know, intimately involved in this uh, incredible story of uh, and, and testimony to God. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and I one thing that's kind of shown up for me as we've been having these conversations is um, I know the Brian Elliott of 2016 and later, um, and really just the 2022, uh, but I did not know 2014 Brian Elliott. And to hear what you have gone through and who you are today, it seems like two just totally different people. And now... This week is actually like book release week, right? You are releasing a book on discipleship. Um, what has God taught you through all of this over the last few years? Well, again, I mean, the, the, that uh, that day of the beginning of 2016, right, really where I handed my life over to God and, you know, I began to, to really hunger after the word of God and really, I mean, freedom became such a... Uh, just a burning desire in my heart because I know I, I couldn't give what I what I don't have to my family or to others and and really I became a disciple so I really became a student of God a student of the Word um, I really looked at the generational aspects and and inner healing and went deep in a lot of those things and and so I spent years just uh, just really I, I was ravenous I wanted more of God I wanted more of His presence and and just really fell in love with the faith and I made the faith my own from something that was very different from what I experienced in childhood. And, you know, as a result of that, I mean, unexpectedly, you know, we've got a ministry now. Bryn has her book, Dying to Live. You know, we're, we're launching right now, More Than Gold, you know, Greater Than Silver is coming out uh, in a few months. And then Bryn and I are going to be co-authoring a book on apologetics. And we've got blogs and now this podcast, uh, you know, and now, you know, I run a kingdom company and doing lots of things that are just, I'm just aligning my life with the word of God and the the kingdom of God. And I just value his kingdom. And it's it's a message, I think, that it's not talked about. In fact, the blog that we released in uh, on Christmas Day 2022 really looked at the gospel of the kingdom of God. And that's something that has fascinated, really fascinated me as to why it's not talked about more. And so, yeah, I'm just really grateful for the the privilege. And I just really am looking to share everything that God's done in my life uh, so he can do it in, in the lives of others. 
And really, the story highlights what is truly the dichotomy that we live in in this world that's expressed in John 10.10. 10. It says that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And Jesus says, I have come that, that you might have life and have it to the full or abundantly. And it really feels like you have experienced both ends of the spectrum. I think that's also why I was drawn to, you know, the, these final last podcasts are really on suffering because, you know, the, what that produced in my life and, and unexpectedly too, like I did not expect, you know, that, that the Lord would do and operate in the way that he has and, and transform me in the way that he has. And even Bryn, when you look at her life and, you know, how seemingly tragic a lot of it is, I mean, she says she is who she is now because of what Jesus has done in and through her life. And and now she's a beacon of hope to the world. I mean, she's just, uh, I mean, she's going to be all over the world in this next 12 months and God is just using her in new ways. I think too, that the beauty of suffering as well is it gives us a, once we really are rooted in him and we're, we're focused on him, that suffering gives us an opportunity to really glorify God. And it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity that really there's nothing else I think that glorifies God than when we're in those places of suffering, that we can still look to him and we can still give him praise. And I remember the, I, I wrote one day in my book and, you know, I said, if, if something is worse than imagined, praise him. If something is better than we thought, praise him. If a door closes, praise him. If a door opens, praise him. When we feel like it, thank him when we don't feel like it thank him so it just really becomes a an attitude of gratitude and and god really does inhabit the praises of his people yeah so there is hope and there's purpose in our pain and in our suffering and when we give our pain to god it's it's not just pain for the sake of pain but now there is purpose uh, and that is not just blowing up for all of these different opportunities in front of Bryn. Um, but your life, you have something to give. Um, you Through this ministry, you get to speak life to families, and, and the word is now getting out. Um, what is that like as you have conversed with God over the years um, that he's, he's showing you that there is this better way, that this is the most excellent way that you've said before? Well, I think it's just incredible how like really there is purpose in our pain. And what I've discovered is so often our greatest pains in life point us to the purpose that God has for our life. And it, and it begins to point us in the direction of our destiny. So there's just, I mean, God just has everything just, it's just thread with life. And I know in my life, like where I've experienced the greatest pain and tragedy is the very place or are the very places that God is using us in M46. And it's, I find it amazing how he redeems us personally. And then he uses us to go in and through to bring that to the world, that everything we have, we're meant to share and we're blessed to be a blessing. And and every gift that we're given is meant to be given away. So it's just uh, it's just how the kingdom of God works. And what is has become really apparent to me as we've had these conversations is it's you're not just using this to be able to go out into the world, but really, and it's, it's the heart of this podcast is that it's really been leveraged in your relationship with your family and with Bryn in particular. Uh, it, one of the things that you say towards the end of the book is that you said, I had e external success, but my life and family were completely void of real peace, security, and the awareness of the unconditional love of God. And I think that sometimes as fathers, the currency that we try to pay our families with is we're going to give them a, a secure home and a comfortable home. Uh, we're going to have cars that we know are going to get them from point A to point B safely. Uh, they're going to have the clothes that they need. They're going to be able to attend the school that is going to give them the best education. And so I, I think a lot of us as dads, we're like, uh, I'm going to give you this. And, and we're trying to pay them in this certain kind of currency. And it's not really the one they want. They want us to be present. They want us to be with them. And really our calling as Christians is a step further than that, is that we are bringing them to the Father 
as well. Um, that, that juxtaposition, that change in your life of the external success and giving your family everything, but really it was nothing, uh, is this disparity that your life has really been flipped on its head. Yeah, 100%. When you start to understand the kingdom of God, that you're, I, I found that my, uh, my priorities my focus, everything began to shift. And you know, when you fill yourself with the Word of God, and and I, I love the Word. I mean, every morning I get into it, I, I read it uh, throughout the day off and on, and and um, it just brings such life. And I know even what I call success, like right now, like Bryn is a missionary, right? She just finished her biblical studies degree uh, with Youth with a Mission. She's going to be heading out now to, uh, she's going to be uh assisting in a school, then she's going to be co-leading a Bible school. She's going to be heading a mission team to Cambodia. Then she's going to be planting a, a biblical studies school in France. And so to think of that, I mean, it was, I mean, it's so outside the realm of possibility. And, you know, she's not doing this obviously for money or worldly success in any way, because missionaries are self-funded. So it's, so it's a it's really disengaging from the world and and she understands that that God is her provider and that her source of everything. So I mean it truly is there is no greater joy than to see your children following the Lord and like I did not train them when they were young and when they were older they will not depart from it. So I had a um a, a tall order ahead of me because I had uh, planted a lot of seed that, uh, that that had to come to fruition in my life and in my family. But just to see her now, I mean, it's just, it, it is probably one of my greatest sources of joy in my life. Yeah. So let's talk about the reaping and the sowing and what that means to be planting seeds and the slow work of growth and waiting for the harvest. Uh, it wasn't that 2016 hit and overnight everything changed and life was good. Uh, and now that you're planting different seed, that everything's just fine. What was that? You, you talk about being impatient and even just angry uh, at the process and how long it's all taking. Yeah, it, it, was, it was kind of funny because about a, um, probably a year ago when I was in the middle of writing this book, uh, and this was towards the very end of writing the book, and I, I kept getting bad news on different things. And I was just... I was just really fed up. You know, I, I had, uh, I got to this point and I was, you know, I had walked this out for years now and, um, you know, there was lots of good things happening. I'm not saying that, but you know, my home was gone. My marriage was gone. My, my daughter, oldest daughter had died, you know, and I was still in the midst of financial discouragements and things still weren't turning around there. And I, I just felt pain and lack. And, and really what it did is it, um, you know, I had lots of, you know, big prophetic words and uh, I was angry. I mean, there's no other way to say it. And But what I did is I, I literally cried out to God and I, I talked to him and I told, I mean, we can't hide anything. He knows every thought that we have. So, I mean, but really I just voiced it. And what I saw happening was, you know, that self-pity and that entitlement really in that discouragement uh, began to shift because the when we're real with God and we're just authentic as we are with any other relationship, there, there's healing in that. And, um, and, you know, I know who God is. I know his nature and I know that he finishes, you know, everything that he starts. I know that he sees the end from the beginning. I know all that. And, and sometimes we really just have to face, you know, we're emotional beings and, uh, and we're, and that's part of being relational. And, and so, I mean, I'll meet God in, in all different types of ways. And, and sometimes it's, it's that way crying out to him. It, but you had to wait, right? So it's, that that even that waiting season, you really changed your relationship with the Lord and started following Him in 2016. But it wasn't like your girls immediately followed. It, you, you said it wasn't really what until 2019, till Bryn uh, came around and and really turned her life around with the Lord. Yeah, I mean, well, there was even greater shaking actually uh, as I went to 2017, 18, 19. But the thing is, when I gave my heart to the Lord that his grace was sufficient through it all. The um, it, It's not the absence. When we give our heart to the Lord, there's going to be shaking and there's going to be battles and there's going to be lots of things are going to come our way. But ultimately, God will never give us anything that we can't handle because if God's for us, who could be against us? So, I mean, it, all these things caused me to, to press into God. And, you know, the, the financial shaking that I really get frustrated with, there were things that needed to fall. I mean, I had false security and money, and there was lots of other things tied to it, even though I didn't think that it had a hold on me. I mean, the Lord just really wanted to, 
uh, I mean, he, he, he's going to do it right. And he's again, just like Bryn said, and one of our earlier podcasts that he's not so concerned with our comfort, he's concerned with our character. So every now and again, you know, we, we've got to, we've got to squirm, but it's all unto life. And I mean, remember in my book, I talked about Jonathan Edwards and this was an old story, but it was, uh, he was a Puritan preacher in the 18th century and he was a graduate of Yale and Princeton. And he was one of the most respected preachers of his day. And his wife was the same. They were a very godly couple. And they actually tracked his life uh, over the next 150 years. And his legacy had one vice president, one dean of a law school, one dean of a medical school, three U.S. senators, three governors, three mayors, 13 presidents, 30 judges, 60 doctors, 65 professors, 75 military officers, 80 public office holders, 100 lawyers, 100 clergymen, and 285 college graduates. And what they did is that same period of time, they followed an ungodly man uh, named Max Jukes. And he was from New York, and he had a pretty shady, dark past, as did his wife. And uh, they did not teach their children the way they should go. And so that ungodly lifestyle propagated through the generations. And so in contrast, in his descendants, there were seven murderers, 60 thieves, 190 prostitutes, 150 convicts, 310 paupers, 440 were physically wrecked by addiction to alcohol. And the other 1,200 descendants that were studied, 300 died prematurely. So there's two opposite ends of the extreme. So my life, I wasn't a Max Jukes, but I was, uh, I, I turned the tide and I began to restore the generational blessings and to restore the, the word of God into my generational line. And so Bryn is the first fruit of that. And what's so beautiful is this is something that is going to go on uh, into the generations and the fruit the that we have uh, through the Holy Spirit and through the ways of God, the word of God, that it will not return void. But what happens is it's eternal fruit. It's, it's fruit and fruit that remains. So it's a, I mean, God is so generous and he brings abundant life. We've talked about this you know, motif of coming out of Egypt and going through the wilderness and, and really what's before us is the promised land. And that's what we all hope for is, is before us. But there, it, uh, all of that, what you're saying, and the the two lineages and the the line there is is just an amazing like those numbers and to be able to track that's like is it possible that the word of God is actually true? But just before the Israelites make their way into the promised land, it's Deuteronomy 30 and Moses is there with the people and he says, see, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. There's two paths, right? And and so he says, if your heart turns away, you're not obedient. If you're drawn to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land that you're crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. But he says, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him for the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land. He swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We really stand at the same place uh, as those Israelites did today. And what the Lord has set before us is the promised land. And we have a choice. And it seems like your story, you have gone through the wilderness so that the next generation would see the promised land. Well, do you know what jumps out too at me is the Moses came. And so the law was delivered through Moses. Shortly after the law was delivered, 3,000 died. Right. And when you look at Acts 2, mm. right, when the when grace uh, and, and the Holy Spirit came, 3,000 were saved. Yep. So you see such a, there's such a life on the word. There's such a life on, on grace. And I mean, God comes, he does. There is abundant life. And it's just, uh, it's an incredible way of living. It's, it's a, a way of just immense freedom. In every great story, there are characters that get played out. Um, and really there's four main characters. There's the victim, the villain, the hero, and the guide. And 
it'd be really easy for you to look at your life and the suffering that you and your family have gone through and to see yourself as a victim and no doubt, and you've, you've said this, that there were moments where you had seen yourself as the victim and we know who the villain is in the story, but that there is a God um, who serves as a guide for us and is really calling us to not live as victims anymore, but that we are called to live out the story as heroes and we are saints and this is what our inheritance looks like. And what I really love about story is that if you watch a great movie, if you read a great book, that there's this thing a couple chapters before the end of the book or 10 minutes before the end of the movie, it's called the climactic scene. It's that scene where you're wondering, are they going to make it? Uh, will will the hero disarm the bomb before the city blows up? Uh, will will the hero of the story make it to the airport just in time before the, the girl gets on the plane and flies away forever? Will he get there in time to be able to pr- propose and, and pop the question? Um, but that climactic scene, um, we, we, I think, live with a little bit of doubt as, as to whether God and his goodness will actually let this scene play out. Is, is our future and what we are looking forward to um, better than what we are experiencing now? If we could see our lives here on earth from heaven's perspective, what would change for us? Everything would change. And that's, and that's the thing. If we understand that we are sons and daughters of God, that we are kings and priests on the earth, that that we, when Jesus came, he was the door to the kingdom of heaven. So through faith in Jesus, we actually had access to the kingdom of God. And so, I mean, the kingdom of God is at hand. And if, if we all understood that and operated that way, and we were to rule and to reign and to, and to give spiritual guidance and leadership in those ways, the world would have a very different, um, a very different existence right now. The young man that I just love, he said, Brian, he said, the Christianity has to be presented as a radical counterculture in order to get the, uh, really the attention of the younger generation. And I said, Kellen, it is. The, the kingdom of God is a radical counterculture to the kingdom of this world. And I think that if we really understood that, and, and, and if that message was trumpeted more and more, I think the hope that people would have would be it'd be unchallengeable because the it's the unshakable kingdom that's within, and as we move in that kingdom and the authority that the that, that he gave us dominion over the earth, and the what was lost in the fall has been restored through Jesus. If we all moved in that way, then you know, and it's a territory for the hearts of man. Like Jesus didn't come to conquer land like earthly territories like and earthly kingdoms do. He came to conquer hearts and through a transformed heart, that transformed heart moves in love and begins to, to transform people around and the environment. And that is then bringing the kingdom of, of heaven on earth. So on earth as it is in heaven, it, as this understanding begins to propagate through the body of Christ, I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. Yeah, we really need to have faith for the outcome and to be able to build that, that, that God is up to something good in in our lives there there's a author uh her name's Brene Brown and and she says that when we look at the course of our lives that there might be uh seasons uh especially with our kids where we we want to we want to protect them and we want to never let anything bad happen to them and and there's certain seasons where uh to picture it like uh, a scrapbook uh that there are some pages that you're going to have some moments on there where there are going to be these difficult um, times where we experience shame or suffering, um, humiliation, uh, but that those pages are not, it's not just about that one picture. Um, they're also surrounded by resiliency and faith and family and hope and there's love. Um, so that by the time, like if, if you just went through a book and every picture was this really horrible picture, you'd say, wow, that's a really sad and awful story. Uh, but she says that it's not the picture, it's it's the scrapbook. Uh, you painted a different picture for me, um, and you talked about God's eternal tapestry. Tell me what that looks like uh, uh, in the in the kingdom sense. Yeah, well, I mean, again, proper perspective, and that changes everything. So in reality, I mean, we see in part, God sees in whole. He sees the end from the beginning. He's the alpha, the omega. And so our life and what's ahead of us is, is just simply, it's a tiny thread 
in the great and infinite tapestry of God. So when you look at what he's doing all throughout history and all through, you know, seven plus billion people and in those lives that we may have a dark thread and, and that dark thread may seem daunting. It may seem impossibly bleak, but when that dark thread, it's, it's woven in and it's going to highlight the good things that God is doing. And so it's not until we can begin to step back and see as God sees and gain his perspective. Now, again, I mean, he, he has an infinite perspective, but the that all the threads serve a purpose and only God can really see the fullness of that, but it's a total masterpiece that's under construction. I think if we can, as we trust God, as we fill ourselves with his word and his promises, that no matter what happens on earth, we understand that there's eternal reward an eternal weight of glory, that that there's treasure in heaven, that when we come to the judgment seat, we're, we're actually saints because his righteousness is now ours and we're redeemed by the blood. So when we come to the judgment seat, it's not we're going to be judged or condemned on that judgment seat. We're going to be receiving eternal rewards at that point. Yeah. Paint a picture for me of of what that reunion in heaven looks like for you, um, that that reunification with Abby and the realization of everything that you hope for. I, I've, I've heard that we look at faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love, that when we are in the midst and, and face-to-face with Jesus, that we no longer need faith because he's right there in front of us, and we no longer need hope because all that we hope for is right there. Um, what's left is love, but what, is, what does that scene look like for you, and why do you long for that? It's interesting. About uh, two weeks ago, I ordered a painting, and it's called Entrance into Heaven. And it's got Jesus and there's this lady and she jumped into his arms and she's got, and she's just got the greatest smile. Like she's just, her mouth is wide open and she's just in a static joy and her arms are wrapped around Jesus and his arms are wrapped around her. And I mean, that's, that's incredible, right? To think, and I mean, and God's already given me visions of Abby and I know that that reunion is going to be incredible. But I also know that now in my union with Jesus, that there's there's a oneness in the body of Christ. And so I know that there's already a oneness with Abby and, uh, and, the, and the other uh, members of my family that have gone to be with Jesus. But what's interesting is like, we're not, we're not living to be rescued into heaven. Like what's going to happen is the, the earth is going to be fully restored and redeemed to the fullness of what God created it to be on earth as it is in heaven. So we are part of the great restoration of the earth and it's a big, it's an incredibly victorious stance and it's appropriating the victory of Jesus and the, uh, and what God has instilled us with, with, with authority to govern, to rule and reign as his ecclesia. And we'll get into a lot more of that, um, actually in, in greater than silver, but I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible future. It's uh, it's an incredible eternity. Just I mean, just to know that there's no fear of death. That I remember the Apostle Paul was like, you know, I, I want to be here because it's important for you that I'm here, but I also want to be with Jesus and 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 fully know him and, and, and the fullness of his glory. So there's this this tug of war, but it's amazing when you can live life without any fear of death. I love it. And this this is all um, very hopeful for us, and I, I love that we're taking three episodes on suffering and, and bringing it really to what what is the ultimate um, promised land is is that really God restores all things, and and we will be in relationship as He intended way back in the garden. So your book is coming out this week and it's significant. And we've talked about this earlier, but just in case somebody is just jumping into this episode in particular, um, why is this week important for the release of this book? Well, when we, when Bryn launched her book, the, and the, it was the launch of the ministry and we were going to launch it on May the 2nd of 2022. And we needed some extra time. And the team said we needed about three weeks. When we looked at the time, three weeks, it was May the 23rd. So it was the very day that Abby had been murdered and Bryn's book released that day called Dying to Live. So it just the redemptive power of God in our lives and, and the restoration of families and all the things that began to move from that time. And 
Um, and I'm launching my book, More Than Gold, on March the 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day, which is Abby's birthday. So it's it's an incredible honor and a blessing to be able to do that. And nobody writes a Christian book thinking that they're going to make millions off of it. So that's a ridiculous thought. But w as you release this, uh, what's your hope for uh, those who are reading it? And why should they get this? You know, again, it started with wanting to... Uh, really share the gospel of grace with my daughter. And then it began to round out for her friends. And then my love of discipleship and what the Lord has given me, I wanted to share with others. So really, I mean, we want to make it as widely available at the, I mean, I'm sure we're going to go to cost or something like that, because we just want to get it into the hands of people. And we're going to have, you know, free online tools as well to be able to, we talked about an assessment really so that we can really judge growth in, in ourselves and, and, uh, and really begin a whole new walk with the Lord. But it's just, I mean, there's, there's so much freedom available and there's so much hope and it's above circumstance that it's not the absence of, of suffering or the absence of conflict, but it's the presence of God that we get to experience on earth as it is in heaven. So there, there's just so much available. So anything that I can do to share that word in the gospel, I, I am very excited and honored to be able to do that. I love it. Um, let's close this out. We want to encourage people to go out and get it, but would you just pray for those who uh, have not yet got the book and that they, uh, that, that God would be moving and use the pages. Um, you're basically, there, there's a birth that's being given here um, and pray that it's not just a, a launch of a, a book, but it's a launch of a, a life uh, anew in Jesus. Would you just pray for those who are receiving? Yeah, Lord, I just, uh, I thank you, Lord, for everybody that's listening. I thank you, Lord, for everybody that you prepared, Lord, to read the book. And, and Lord, as they enter into each chapter in those reflection questions, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would meet them in a whole new way. Lord, as they look to you, as they listen to your voice, as they get to experience you in and through each chapter, Lord, I just pray that the, the Word of God, Lord, alive and active, Lord, would just move. I just pray for the renewing of everyone's minds, that they would know the good and perfect and acceptable will of God. I bless the destiny of everyone. I bless their families, their relationships, and I just declare just fruitfulness over everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us in the journey of season one of The Father Pursuit. As this season is coming to a close, we're excited about what's coming next season. We hope that these episodes have been an encouragement to you during times of suffering. And may the Lord continue to be your strength and your guide as you suffer through those difficult seasons of life, but knowing that He is ever present and ready to bring restoration and peace. And we're so excited to announce that Brian's book, More Than Gold, is officially out this week. So you can find it on Amazon and Kindle and Audible and everywhere books are sold. But you can go to m46ministries.com. That's a great starting place to find it. And much of what we've discussed here in season one was pulled from the pages of his book. So we highly encourage you to check it out for further engagement and insight. Get one for you. Get one for some of the people in your life who are on the journey as well. And until next time, courageously press on as you pursue your families, as you pursue your heavenly father, knowing that he is pursuing you. No matter where your life takes you, never forget. He is always with you and he loves you deeply. So be blessed in the pursuit.